All right, here we go. Sauce Money. Welcome to Vlad TV. Vlad, what's good? Hey, man, when you reached out, I'm like, oh, shit. I definitely want to do this interview. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I don't really talk much. Yeah. But uh, I felt it might be time. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, I've been listening, you know, to you ever since Reasonable Doubt. And uh, I copped the solo album when it came out. That was in rotation in my car for a while. Right. Um, you know, you have a very rich history in hip hop, so I'm glad you actually came down to talk about it. Nah, nah, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. No doubt. Well, you know, it was your first time here, so let's start from the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, you grew up in Brooklyn. Yeah, Marcy Projects. All my life, yeah. you know. So you were actually born in Marcy Projects. Yep, yeah, I was born in Cumberland Hospital, and I've been in Marcy from day one. So you're talking about the 70s, 80s. Yeah, 69, I was born. Right, exactly. Yeah. So you grew up in the 70s and 80s. Yeah, yeah. What was Marcy like during that time? Um, it was more it was more family-oriented back then. You know, it was like a village raising everybody. You know what I'm saying? So it was, we policed ourselves. You know, so your neighbor... They could beat you just like your moms and pops could beat you. You know what I'm saying? That's how we, you know, that's how we was coming up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you got beat by your neighbors every so often? Yeah, when you got out of line, absolutely. Okay. I mean, if you're talking about the 80s, that's when crack actually started hitting. Right. So do you remember what it was like before and after that actually happened? I mean, there was people getting money. But when, when you know, guys my age, and when I mean my age, like 14, 15, 16, when they started coming up with the money, that's when you knew something, you know, something special was happening. You know, so it was like almost like an overnight thing. You know what I'm saying? You had the older, the older generation kind of getting dope money or whatever a little bit, but when the younger dudes started getting money, that's when you know crack was 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 home to stay you know what i'm saying okay you know along with the money though came you know the devastation came the the crackheads came the addicted mothers came the crack babies and everything else like that so what do you think was some of the worst things that you saw during that era i mean you know what to be honest with you the devastation really wasn't in the forefront at that time. You didn't really see how bad it was going to get. It was just, you know what I'm saying? It was just really starting, so you didn't really see the end result of it. You know, because people were just gradually, you know what I'm saying, becoming what they were becoming by, you know, using it or whatever. But you didn't really see the end result right away. Okay. And you personally, how much... You know, how involved were you with all the street shit? Um, I, I, I got my first ounce of crack from Danny Dan. He was, he was like the local legend from Marcy. You, you, you may hear him on, you know, Reasonable Doubt. You hear Jay referencing him. He used to date my sister. And uh, I remember... Uh, a friend of mine named V.I., you know, he used to get money back in the days. And uh, I went up there and got my first ounce, you know, and uh, I, had, I had an individual by the name of Metcalf. He was like a known hustler, a known killer in, in our hood. And, you know, he was helping me move the work. But I, I was low with mine, like, I, not too many people knew. So you never tried to become a kingpin with the shit or whatever else. You were just using it to just buy sneakers and pay yeah, some bills. Yeah, chains and all that. Like, no, nah, I, I, I wasn't in it for, for that. You know, it wasn't really... Selling drugs wasn't really a necessity for me. I didn't have to do it to survive. You know, so there's mm -hmm. a different kind of... You know, it was, it's a different kind of need for those that got to put food on the table with that. I, didn't, I, I wasn't in that position. At what point did you actually meet Jay Z? Uh, me and Jay grew up. I don't know. He might have been twelve, thirteen, or something like that. Fourteen. Um, 
playing basketball in the back, playing football on the road and all that. So, you know, right around then. Okay. And you guys are the same age? Same age. Yep. Okay. So 12, 13 years old, you meet Jay-Z. Right. Uh, I assume neither one of you guys were rapping back then. Um, I wasn't. I don't know if he was. You know, uh, I was more into sports. You know, um, but we weren't close, close like that. You know, it wasn't like I was hanging out with him every day at that time. But uh, so I don't, I don't really know exactly when he started to do the music. Okay. So at what point did you guys really start linking up and, and getting close and working on the music and so forth? Um, I would say maybe about, I was aware of him doing the music about 87, 88. Because I, re I remember taking, he had a tape that was circulating through the projects. And uh, I remember taking that tape, you know, down south when I was in school, in college at Alley University in Columbia, South Carolina. And uh, I remember just, you know, reciting all the rhymes from the tape down there and people just going crazy. And that's what kind of really got me wanting to, you know, actually get involved with the music. Okay. And this was after he started working with jazz and did like Hawaiian Sophie and the originators and all that? This is around the same time. Around the same okay. time. Okay, so, so Jay-Z's working with jazz, but he's also creating his own stuff on the, on the side. Right. Okay. So what happens next between you two? I come back, I come back from school, and now I'm, I'm involved now, because now when, you know, while I'm away, I'm writing and I'm trying to hone my craft. He still doesn't know at this point, you know. So when I come back, I'm like, yo, come to my crib. I want to show you something. So, you know, I had this uh, this this album. I think it might have been like the Brecker Brothers. And, I, you know, I put the album on and I spit this rhyme over the Brecker Brothers. It was a jazz record. And it was like probably like 145 beats per minute. And I'm, you know, keeping up with it. And he just looking at me like, wow, like. The shit probably sucked, but you know he's like, nah, you know, keep it up or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And and that's when he really learned that I was into the music. Okay, and what year was this about? I would say about eighty nine, ninety. Okay, so this is still pretty early. Yeah. Okay, so you guys, you know, connect on the on the hip hop thing, and what starts to develop after that? Um, we start bonding, we start, you know, doing more records together, you know, because at this time I'm getting better now. And uh, so, you know, we would do certain, certain, you know, songs with uh, F Fresh Gordon and Clark and, you know, we just, it's almost like we becoming a, a duo, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 you know, even Jazz, he was around, so we have records together or whatever, so... It was um, it was education for me because they were, you know, they were a little more advanced. So I was playing catch up, but you know, I'm still in there spawn with them, and you know, we you know sharpening our our craft. So it was it was a time, it was a time. Okay, and in those days, Jay Z still hustling. Like he's not making really any rap money. Yeah, he 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 was always. From you know when I came back from school, but well, probably even before I even left, he was he was involved. He was involved. Yeah. Okay. But you yourself were not involved in any of that. That was his thing. Not with him. You know I had did my own thing for a little while. Like I said, you know when I got the work from Danny and I had Metcalf doing. I would dabble here and there, but it was never. On a consistent basis, no. Right, but he was consistently, you know, moving shit out of state and, and involved in all that type of shit. You know, the stuff that he's talked about already. Yeah, that was his. That was his bread and butter. Yeah. 
So you guys are working together, getting better and so forth. Mm-hmm. The, the, first, the first appearance that I found with you guys rapping together, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, was the Big Daddy Kane show and prove record. Show and prove was probably the first commercial release that we appeared on together. I would, okay. I would say, yeah. And that was, that was Big Daddy Kane featuring you, Jay-Z, Old, Old Dirty, Dirty Bastard, Bastard Shaheem. Shaheem the Rugged Child from Wu-Tang. Sc- right, in school. In yeah. school. That yeah. was one of his dancers, right? Yeah, that was one of his dancers. Okay. And you guys shot the music video for it and everything. You know, you guys are, yeah. are outside. Yeah, we shot the video on LG. The funny story with that is... Old Dirty Bastard, we couldn't find Old Dirty Bastard. He didn't he, he wasn't coming to the to the to the you know to the video shoot. So it's almost like they had to kidnap one of his people just to get him to the shoot. Like this is a true story. You know what I mean? So we finally got him to the shoot and we shot the video. Okay. So you guys do the song and the video. And this was back when Jay Z was was rapping fast. He was doing like the double time and everything else like that. Right. Uh, you know, you could still hear similarities, but but it is a, you know, a pretty different type of rhyme style. Right. Yeah. The triple you know, than, thing. Yeah. Than even what you heard, you know, even on Reasonable Doubt. Right. So so you guys do this record, and um, was it a big record in New York, or because I was living on the West Coast, so I couldn't really tell. I don't really know the type of success that that project had for Kane. I think it was more of a of a hood record. It was just embraced in the hood. It wasn't. I don't think it was really like commercially successful like that. 